In this screencast, I'm going to sort of introduce the concept of a case study. A lot of times you'll use Excel to solve these case studies. What you'll have normally are some sort of values here in a column. These are your input values and you want to look at what effect do these input values have on the output. You have some sort of spreadsheet calculation involving one uh, or many cells and the input cell goes into that calculation then you have one or more calculations and you get an output or a result cell and then that result cell is linked to uh, the corresponding result values so you're sort of seeing what effect do the input values have on the output the problem that we're going to be working with is depicted here we have what is known as a one-way case study so one way means that we're only looking at the effect of a single variable. So I've got this cantilever beam. It's tied in or, or anchored to the wall here on the left. And it's on the right side. It's just kind of free hanging, almost like a diving board. And obviously, if you apply a force, big F, to the end of this beam, then it's going to deflect. And the deflection is known as delta. Depending upon the length and depending upon, if you look at the cross section here, looking down the beam from from the right so it's got a width b and a thickness of little d so depending upon all three of these variables l b and d and the force you're going to get a different deflection now obviously different materials are going to have different mechanical properties so if you had something that was soft or something that is very stiff then the deflection given these different variables is going to be quite different. It turns out that the deflection can be given by this equation here. Deflection equals force times length cubed divided by 3 divided by E, which is known as the modulus of elasticity. That's a property of the material. Divided by I, which is the moment of inertia. I can be calculated using B, which is the thickness, times D cubed over 12. So for a specific scenario, given the variables L, B, D, and F, and also knowing what the modulus of elasticity is for that particular material, we can determine the deflection delta. So let's go through an example here. Our goal is to determine how does deflection delta change as a function of L. So the only thing we're going to be changing in this one-way case study is the length L. And we're going to be varying L from two to four feet. So we've got basic data. We're gonna apply a force of 100 newtons. We have a modulus of elasticity of this material of 30 times 10 to the sixth PSI. And then we're gonna choose B equals one inch and D equals two inch. And we're gonna determine delta as a function of L. So let's go ahead and set this up in Excel. You can download this file if you'd like. It's called beamstarter.xlsx. So I've got the basic data here. We have the force, we have 100 newtons, we have the modulus of elasticity. I've converted that to Pascals, and you can do this using a conversion factor. So this 6895 converts PSI to Pascals. You can get conversion factors from a lot of different sources. You can just Google them. And we're converting to Pascals and meters for our length because we want to use SI units. So I've got my length in feet, and right now I just kind of have a single variable. We're going to be doing a case study on length down here going from 2 to 4. So I've just chosen just a random value here between 2 and 4. That's 2.4 feet. I've converted that to meters using a conversion factor. I've also got my value of D, which is 2 inches, and B, which is 1 inch. And each of those I've converted to meters. So we're going to be working with everything in meters. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is name some of these things. I'm going to name this cell, B4, up here in the name box. That's going to be F, just to make things easier. I'm going to name the converted modulus of elasticity. So that's capital E in cell B6, because that's in SI units. I'm going to call that big E. L then, we want to use the SI units. So I'm going to call that L up here. Then D in meters, and same thing, I'm going to name that little b. So I've named everything. Now up here in this cell for i, I'm going to use this formula here so I can just type this in. Because I've named these different variables, it makes this very easy to do. 
So we compute the moment of inertia I to be 2.7 times 10 to the negative seventh meters to the fourth. Now I can use this other equation down here to compute delta in meters. Actually, let me back up. I'm gonna name this I. So now I can put a formula in here and we get the deflection. When L is 2.4 feet, we get a deflection of about 2.3 times 10 to the negative fourth meters. So I can just take my deflection in meters and multiply it by a thousand to get deflection in millimeters.